The Vrail Collection is a large collection, thousands of rare books on electricity and electrical engineering, magnetism, lighter than air travel. This is a very important collection for the history of, of science and technology. These books had formed part of the MIT collection for years and years, but were not fully cataloged and were underused. It was a great surprise when I found out about this sort of hidden collection, which, you know, is world class and is yet still available to be brought to my classroom. That's just an amazing thing. The Vrail Collection came to MIT in 1912. It was assembled by a British gentleman, rather a brilliant inventor, named George Edward Daring. Daring who was a wealthy landowner and had had a standing order with the English book dealers from 1850 till he died in 1911 to send him any material that was on the subject of magnetism, electricity, in any language. And when he died in 1911, Theodore Vail, who at the time was the president of AT&T, heard that the collection was going to be auctioned off and immediately sent a telegram bidding and buying that collection. He wanted it in the United States. He thought that the best place for it was the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. There's something just really powerful about being able to see one of these original texts, look at the drawings and look at the markings of all the people who've held it since and think about all the people who've poured through this. We have papers and books that have been inscribed by some of the most important figures in science and technology to other important figures in science and technology. Essentially the scientific conversation. I would almost call it sort of the human aspect of scientific publishing. The main reason why I'm a supporter of the libraries is to take a stand against this idea that books are obsolete. There's an awful lot in a book that researchers can find watermark hints and clues. There's history there and there's evidence of how things were done that should be preserved. You see all kinds of different ideas being tossed around, some of which you're very familiar with and become standard ideas, but you know, not too far away, maybe in the next page, ideas that we would consider absolutely crazy. And I think seeing how for the author it was hard to distinguish between different ideas is a really instructive thing for students to see. The old saying of standing on the shoulders of giants, I think it gives students and indeed our faculty a sense of being that much closer to those giants on whose shoulders they stand. The very history of science and technology is reflected in these books. They're literally monuments. They're treasures of, of human history, of, of human achievement.